So let's talk about multiple sclerosis. Yes, well, so multiple sclerosis is involved with an inflammation of the, um, of the um, myelin, you know, in the, in the nervous system, in the brain. And, um, the myelin is what? The myelin is this myelin sheath that myelin sheath. Um, covers the um, axons. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it's, there's a lot of it in the brain, but it's a uh, substance that uh, you say provides axons. You're talking about the nerve, the, the the nerve cells. Yeah. So there's these connections the between whole the nerve system cells. Has little little paddings, like insulation almost. Looks yes, like insulation. insulation surrounding where the, where the signal. So when the signal's sent through a long wire, it needs insulation in order to stay inside the wire. Otherwise, the signal will leak out. Okay. And the myelin provides that insulation. And, um, and myelin has a lot of cholesterol in it, and it also has a lot, of, a lot of sulfur. So it's no a no-brainer to think that without cholesterol and without adequate sulfate, you would have trouble producing myelin. And it's also tied to the cobalamin. Uh, and I just found out recently from someone I've been talking to from Manitoba, Canada, since I wrote my paper, um, and he's it triggered us to be interested in this new paper on cobalamin because. Um, He's talking about uh, something he's been seeing in, in uh, swine over the last six years mm -hmm. as a veterinarian. He's a veterinarian in Canada, and he's been seeing this paralysis, uh, hind limb paralysis. Have you heard about this? Hind limb paralysis. So in the pigs the are getting are having trouble walking. Yes, um, that's due to inflammation in the spinal cord. Um, oh, you talked about inflammation in the spinal cord before. I forget what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I just, yeah. I found out about this, the, and this is really yeah. kind of lighting me up because I really think I need to look into this, and, I, and it's, tied, it's tied directly to cobalamin. They, and I found articles that talk about swine getting paralysis through cobalamin deficiency. And cobalamin deficiency cobalt. is the lack of cobalt. Yes. All right, so... So I think that could tie to that. And then the third thing with the um, multiple sclerosis is, in fact, the gut bacteria. And they have found that, like, there's an allergic reaction. You get a sort of autoimmune reaction because you're exposed to something from the gut bacteria that looks a lot like something in your in your own cells. So you get so you start attacking yourself. It's a sort of it's an autoimmune deficiency disease, and you attack your myelin sheath because it looks like something that's in these gut bacteria that leaked out because of the leaky gut. So you have that connection as now, well. Now, leaky gut. How would you? How do you? Link glyphosate with leaky gut. Is it just because it's it's causing messed up gut bacteria, and the bacteria itself then cause? Well, it, I think it's actually because it causes the. So I think it's the sulfate deficiency that's causing the leaks. Because when the cell is deficient in sulfate, it it shrinks, and that provides holes between it, and that allows the bacteria to escape. This is very interesting because I was look. I'm trying to get this because people talk about the junction points between mm. cells. Uh, are very tight. The tight junctions. And then they become called. looser for leaky gut. Yes. Now, I've been linking leaky gut with the possibility of BT toxin, which is another aspect. Which of I GMOs. think you may be right on that. But that pokes holes in the cells themselves. It might also poke holes in the junctions, but it pokes yeah. holes in the cells. Wow. We did, they never checked the, the, the membranes. Yeah. But if it, if it, I mean, the, the, the junctions, amazing. but it may cause leakage within the cells. But I was wondering about this yeah, junction. Yeah, the between. leaky gut has to do with the cells shrinking and um, and therefore allowing gaps between them because they're supposed to be a tight, you know, as you say, tight junctions between all the cells that right. are lining the epithelium of the gut. And so when they shrink up, then they allow the bacteria to escape. That could be even more powerful than the BT toxin. Yeah. In any case, it allows like unfettered access to the bloodstream right. by the glyphosate in the body as well as everything That's else. That's right. The glyphosate can get out and of course the bacteria can get out and the bacteria then have all these products that are that are now your immune system is exposed to all these things that it's not supposed to be exposed to and that's how you can get an accidental match to something in the myelin that then it causes you to attack the myelin because you think it's foreign. This connection between um, leaky gut and glyphosate is huge. I mean there are tens of thousands of practitioners right. now that believe leaky gut is the source of so many diseases. It's not fully accepted by the American Medical Association right. model, um, but it's still being used as a working model, and it's people are saying that they're actually having tremendous uh, successes by healing the leaky gut, and then the diseases associated with it yes. um, find success.